friends, Minecrafters, and welcome to another exciting Minecraft discussion. Uh, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and I'm really happy about this topic of talking about uh, <clears throat> focusing on the path and not the obstacle. And it's coming from somewhere because I've had some colleagues kind of come to me about feeling stuck. Anyway, we're going to get to that in a second. So <clears throat> I deliberately phrased it, focus on the path and not the obstacle instead of the reverse, which is, fo you know, don't focus on the obstacle. Because then what you want to do is focus on the obstacle. That's just human nature. And <clears throat> so this deliberate wording was important. And, and actually, I'm a little bit inspired by, by Simon Sinek today. Though I've had, again, I've had colleagues just kind of having these conversations with me in the hallway. A couple of them have called me up. Um, but Simon Sinek said, uh, he was talking about this don't focus on the obstacles thing, only reverse, focus on the path. And he says, think about it if you, if you, if you don't want a child to eat on the couch, you don't say, don't eat on the couch. Well, you can say that, but it's better to say, let's go eat at the table. It's just, it's just a smoother entrance into a new behavior, you know, a different behavior, redirecting that, that behavior. And as mentioned, gosh, it was a long time ago now, though now, we, the human mind is actually predisposed for negative thinking. Way back, it's a primal thing, way back to when we were surviving, you know, being chased around by saber-toothed tigers and things. We, so it's a little bit heavier lift to, um, to, to think of the positive. So that's said, we're gonna stay within our, 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 our chat here about focusing on the path. And I also think of skiing. Simon brought this up too, but this I got all on my own because we're a skiing family, Northern Vermont, and it's one of the, my biggest loves of this life is skiing. It's just so much fun. And all five of our fabulous young adults ski, and I'm thinking of our, all of them do, I was fortunate enough to go out west this, this winter with, with my oldest and youngest, which was a cool dynamic. But the oldest has always, and the youngest actually, have this really, this love of the trees. We all tree ski and it's just, it's so great. And I'm thinking of watching him now, just a couple months ago, and he was like that at eight. It's kind of like I saw his eight-year-old self just surfing through the trees. And here's me like, where is she going with this? I have a plan. Because if you take somebody into the trees for the first time, even if, they, even if they're a decent skier, they'll probably, if they're a decent skier, they're already in the trees. So let's say, a, you know, somebody who's newer at it, and you say, don't hit the trees, they're gonna be, have a really rough time in there and struggle, because all they can think about is don't hit the trees. Interestingly, I'm thinking when Ryan was, you know, like eight, and he t he's like watching a dolphin in the ocean, he just surfs, because he's got his eye on the path. It's almost like the trees aren't even there. They're doing this pretty, this beautiful canopy effect thing, and they're gorgeous, and he just kind of like surfs and bounces through those. And so that, that visual is really working for me with, with the message I wanna to deliver today about focusing on the path, because that surfing through the trees thing with skiing is wonderfully metaphorical for being in the flow in life, for living our highest vibes. So that's what we're gonna to get to. So. The colleagues being so kind, God, I work with the best people ever, and some of them are just up for an, a, a new move. You know, they're just up for, I'm not even saying leaving, but they're up for something, maybe a side hustle, something. Because they're just feeling um, like they want a next move, something ex exciting. And so most of them are my age range, I think can think of one in their 40s, mostly in their 50s. And it, they're talking a lot, and they are very self-aware, actually, the one, the, these little hallway chats and things. So we've been talking a lot about signature strengths. What are your signature strengths? Because when we, in order to be in the flow zone, like that feeling of surfing through the trees only through life, right? We, we've got to be aware, very self-aware in general, but also to know your signature strengths. So I've been talking about those inventories. There are lots of free ones out there, like the VIA is free, and um, you can go on the internet and do that. Strength scope is not free, but it's not expensive, and that's my favorite one. So it comes up with this color wheel, and it's pretty to look at. And so basically, it's about what excites you, what gets you excited versus what drains you. And I took this with a good, with a friend of mine, Tom, and um, and he actually does that for, as part of what he does. And it comes up with this pretty, this pretty beautiful colors. So what the t two of the top ones for me were optimism and creativity. I'm also a huge freedom person. But what's nice about this strength inventory is it doesn't say you're really good at this and you suck at this. It just said this is what really gets you high on life. Okay, the optimism, the creativity, and then I had a whole wide range of people, it really it was because I love people. That's what gets you excited. On the 
bottom of that was details. I wouldn't last a week, not one week, in, in, a, in a position where it involved a lot of detail, like accounting, and I would just, I wouldn't even last, to, forget a week, I wouldn't last a day. And what's interesting now is I'm currently doing some very cool research with a colleague of mine and also a team of students, and, the, and it's, it's good that I know this because obviously research involves a lot of detail. My role is to oversee the creativity with the students, also the well-being piece, because the research has to do with, with well-being and, and, and VR, virtual reality, and it has to do with on all that, and doing the, doing the testing student with the students is also good for me because it's like hands-on, and we're talking, and then I've got a wonderful colleague of mine who's a research wizard and loves to, to loves the details. So if you know that about yourself, you can then share stuff with other people and you can focus on your own, what, you're, what you shine at and what excites you and what brings joy to you. So that's what we're talking about right here. Um, and then, okay, signature strengths. Okay, okay, okay. And then talking about the job career calling thing, that's important. Because the job is basically a money maker. It doesn't mean you can't be happy at it, but it's just that's what it's an external motivation. And external motivation doesn't last as long. Or sorry, extrinsic motivation doesn't last as long as intrinsic. So then they have a they have a level. So job money maker, career also a money maker, though it's usually backed by education and or training. And it's usually got a higher level of fulfillment, more meaning, and longer lasting. Usually. Okay? And that's where some of my colleagues are at now. Like they really kind of like, but they're ready for like maybe not a total, total change, but like a take what we've already got with all of our strengths and everything we've done so far and just maybe a new twist, something just a little new. You know what I mean? Just a little new because I'm feeling stuck. And then we've got the calling, which is the top tier. And that's where there's a lot of books written on this. Do what you love and the money will follow. Do what you love and the money will follow. Imagine that. And the calling thing has to do with, with the personality being in alignment with our authentic pur purpose, what we were meant, what we were put on this earth to do. And so, so there is no way to get there without acknowledging that there's a divine connection. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about a spiritual connection, which is inside of us. That's also important because also people, when they're stuck, they're looking for the solution out here. You're doing this mass mailing of hire me or this mass mailing of look at my new idea and all that's important if it's in alignment but really the answers are all inside the answers are all inside and really it's about listening to you know when you put it out there those whispers that come back that inner voice that gut that inner voice is a uh, source or universe talking back to you in fact um, because it is about alignment. Okay, Oprah says this a lot, my dear friend Oprah. Alignment of your personality with your authentic purpose. That is how you get in the flow zone, and then the money flows in because you're doing what you love. That's just how it works. Abundance just, and I mean abundance and wealth in all ways, not just money. It's just You're in the flow zone. You're just so excited to get up and do whatever it is. So it's very important um, to be aware of this. And then, uh, I forget who said this, so I can't even do a shout out to it, but it might, I think it's, I think it's Wayne Dyer, actually, but I'm not 100% sure. That if you really want to make the universe or source laugh, if for me it's God, God, universe, source, whatever, um, creator of all things, higher power, tell her your plans. Because this is also important with following your path, is to put it out there, what, you know, my next move, I'm really excited, help me, help me with what it is, help me with, you know, find it. Just be ready for the answer. Be open, I guess be, that's what I wanted to say. Be open on the receiving end to all the abundance the universe can throw at you. And also be open to it not looking like what you think it looks like. Because the universe, you know, is going to throw something at you that's going to be great and far better than what we're coming up with, right? So it's just important to be aware of that. Ask and, like, let it go. Just ask and put it out there. And I'm not saying sit on the couch and have a sandwich like we talked about the last one. It takes effort and you gotta you know, stay in it and make your connections and stuff, but really put it out there and, and make sure that you are aware of your signature strengths. Just remember, personality in alignment with authentic purpose and with service. That is like the most important, important part. And I say that in my Jeep each and every day when I, I'm driving into Champlain where I love it and I am in my flow zone there. How can I be of service? Not talking about religion, just talking about how can I be of service because we also don't want to try to plan our next move around what's in it for me. You know, the what's in it for, for you will come naturally as a, side of, as a side effect. 
just like the money. What's in it for me will we'll come at you anyway. We have to look for what we can, what we can give. What goodness can I put out into to the world? And with, in alignment with my personality and what I'm meant to do. And then it all comes together and you are in the flow zone, just like, just like surfing through the trees. Okay, this is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.